Hello. Welcome to my studio office. Spare bedroom. It's plenty of fun. <clears throat> Who you're talking to at any one time. Um, a few people have expressed interest in me doing videos on process uh, for certain types of photography and equipment and that sort of thing. Um, I've tried this a couple of times and to be honest I really hate being in front of the camera so I look really awkward and nervous because I am. Um, but I figure if you don't start somewhere you won't get anywhere so I'm going to start here and persevere and given that as part of my day job I do train people and explain things to people it would seem like a sensible thing to give it a go. Um, anyway frustratingly I'd quite like to do um, some videos on sort of like specific processes and breakdowns of certain shots. Uh, unfortunately this is this small two and a half by two and a half room in chaos is currently the space I have while we're waiting to get something else sorted out. Covid has not been particularly helpful uh, with getting a proper studio space or even a larger space sorted out. It is something that is on the cards, hopefully. Um, anyway, so I thought in the interim, get myself comfortable to the idea. I instantly I'd quite like to have some much nicer production values in this, but again, lack of space kind of precludes from doing anything particularly interesting, so you're just going to have to deal with the chaos in the background. Um, I did consider putting up a backdrop, but I'm, honestly, I want to be in the position where I can put these together fairly quickly and easily without too much faff, and if that involves building backdrops and things like that, I, I'm just not going to do it. So, in the interest of just getting on with it and doing it, I'm doing it in my chaotic space. I like my chaotic space, it's got all my stuff, you can't see all of it, but there's all my racks of equipment up there. Um, anyhow, uh, a couple of people have also shown interest in me doing um, videos on the tools I use and just generally on tools that I have found. So here's one I didn't know existed until the other week and I'm really excited because I get really excited by really boring things. Um, one of the things I need on a fairly regular basis is bits of material with lots of holes knocked in them, generally to do like bokeh? Who can pronounce it? Not me. Bokeh effects. Um, or sort of like cartoon-esque starscapes and that sort of thing. And to be honest, it's a massive pain in the bum to do. I used to use a bradle. I don't know how to pronounce that either. Bradle, bradle, spike, a spike on a handle and stab it through bits of black card. But to be honest, it's not that easy because this is not a bit of black card. It's a bit of paper that I'm recycling from a form I had to fill in because um, I don't want to waste card, frankly. Um, the issue is, is, A, if you use it on a cutting mat, you just get very, very small holes. You can't even see them on the camera, I don't think. Um, which just doesn't work unless you put an incredibly bright light behind it, and an incredibly bright spread light behind it. Um, so the other option is to stab through the card on top of something soft, like a piece of foam, it just gets into a faff and then you ask your small child to do it and he gets carried away and attacks it and makes holes in it and it's fantastic but it doesn't quite get the effect you achieve. Anyway, I thought there's got to be something that exists to make this process easier. There is! It's a, um, I need to look up what it's called now, it's a Japanese screw hole punch which is something I had never heard of until the other day and I found it online and I ordered it from an online shop, I'm not going to name, and because I'm not a fan. Anyway, it does exactly what I need, so I'll show you what it does and why I'm so excited. So it's a handle with a contraption of some sort on the end, I don't particularly understand. And it comes with a bunch of these punches. So you unscrew the top, you choose the size you want, let's go for... Excuse me, my hair is escaping, which is not particularly helpful. Let's go for a nice big round hole. Pop that in there. And screw the top back on again. Now, I had assumed when I ordered it that I would need to smack it with a mallet or similar to make the holes, but oh no, it is so much cooler than that. Spring loaded. Look at that. 
absolutely fantastic. Just perfect round holes, holes that are big enough to actually shine light through and have a decent amount of effect from. I'm going to do some tests later. But anyway, so you can do nice big holes and you can switch it out and go, oh, I want some small holes now. Possibly these are a bit too small for my purpose, but as far as examples go, it's fine. Yes, look at that. Holes, nice even holes for shining lights through and doing interesting special effects. I'm just going to stand here and do this for five minutes now. You don't have to watch. I'm enjoying myself. Let's do another size. I don't know what size that is. They do come in specific sizes, but I don't care. Attack the paper. Attack the annoying form I had to fill in earlier. Anyway, as you can see, I misfired a couple of times there. Very quickly and easily get a nice series of holes in a piece of paper or card. Oh, I did earlier. On a video I abandoned earlier. Marvellous. Instantly, I'm not bleeding from the hand I've been painting things. Um, there we go. So that's my first example of a fantastic tool, Japanese screw hole punch. I do not know where the bits of paper I've punched out go. I assume they fall out of here. Yeah, they do. They fly across the table in some form. Thank you for bearing with me. Goodbye.